Okay, now that you know what a network is, let's talk about an enterprise network. An enterprise network does the same thing a home network does, except it does it for a whole lot of people working for a large company. I work in an enterprise networks that support as many as 20,000 people, and some places have even more than that. So let's use a business as an example. In fact, let's pick the biggest business in the world, the federal government. Let's say the federal government decided to make a new department called, I don't know, the Department of Endangered Gummy Worms. All right, that's too silly. All right, let's call it the Department of Peace, D-O-P for short. The mission of our imaginary department is to promote peace all across the world. In order to support this mission, they employ 2,000 employees. Let's say about 1,000 of those employees are agents, some stationed in Washington, D.C., and others living overseas in different offices all over the world. Their job is to report on site whenever there's a major conflict that they're... Um, that might be happening and they're trained to keep the peace. Well, these employees would need computers to work and do their jobs like, I don't know, send emails back and forth to each other. The other 1,000 employees work to support those agents. Let's say these support employees manage things like human resource, you need people to do your budgeting, you need folks to upkeep the facilities, and the list goes on and on and on. Well, these support people, they work in the areas that require computers. For example, Every now and then, the HR department might need to send the latest payroll report to the budgeting department, or an employee uh, might need to send an electronic request to facilities to replace a burnt light bulb in the ceiling or something. I say this to say that every DOP computer will need to be interconnected, meaning the devices need to be able to connect to each other. Oh, and let's say an employee is about to be deployed on a peace trip to China, so he's going to need to book a flight on Travelocity or something. Well, that means the company will need to access the internet as well. Right? So, all these examples of work performed at DOP will be referred to as the department or the company's mission goals. The point I'm trying to make here is that in order to carry out these mission goals, companies will need IT support. Looking at our home network diagram, this simple home router will not be able to support the amount of employees at DOP. It will be a major overload. I mean, it'll just jam up the network. So that means we need to scale things up a bit. By scaling things up, what I mean is we need bigger and better machines that can handle higher volumes. Now, let's take a look at the physical components of an enterprise network. In an enterprise network, you have end users. We simply refer to them as users. And no, I don't mean users like your cousin that's always staying over and asking you to borrow money. <laughs> what I'm talking about in the IT support world, users are the people that use computers for their daily work. For example, the budget specialist that needs to create a budget spreadsheet or the HR specialist that needs to post jobs on a job website. These are users. In my house, the users are me and my family. So an enterprise network has to support thousands of users so we know they will need thousands of computers. We will um, place a few laptops here to represent 2,000 computers. Now, in an enterprise network, we will need to have routers, just like the home routers. Oh, no, 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 not those kind of routers again. Remember, it can't handle that. We need some heavy-duty, big-boy enterprise network routers. Let's look at what an enterprise network router looks like in real life. Let's go to Google real quick and search enterprise routers. Click on images. Ha, ah, here's some right here. In addition to looking different, they're big and heavy because, well, they're not just routing your smart TV and your home laptop. They're routing for thousands of people. So we will use this symbol here to represent routers. We will also have these things called switches in our enterprise network. We will use this symbol to represent switches. Think of switches as routers because they both route information throughout your network. The only difference is routers are just smarter at routing than switches. Smarter, by the way, means more expensive. So networks usually prefer to buy switches with very few routers, and then they place the routers in strategic locations where they need smarter technologies. So users working at the Department of Peace will come to their office, they'll log into their computer, and connect to each other and to the internet through the routers and switches. But we're not done with the physical component of an enterprise network yet. Next, we're going to learn about servers. See you next time.